Okay, so first of all, let's explain the hat. We have worn this. This is actually just... We'll, we'll do the, you can write down below what does this hat mean. The animal is a cheetah, and we're full of diamonds and gold. This is actually real diamonds. This is Mike Harnstein sponsored me this hat. This is a fucking expensive hat. Anyway, that's why I don't share my address. I don't want my hat stolen. Anyway, serious video now. During a prison. So there was a prison fund going around. So there's a guy on YouTube who claims to be a vegan who's just come from absolute nowhere but gained a lot of support from uh, flaky people such as vegan gains, etc. Now, what this guy did is he emailed, messaged a lot of young girls, you know, a lot of girls in my community that I've created here in Chiang Mai, in Australia, international, the Royal Four community, hundreds of them, hundreds of people he has contacted, and guys as well. And one particular one that got me riled up was this one. This one here was 12th of May, 2016. I've covered the girl's name because she is underage. I saw your references to Doisa Tep. Are you going to Chiang Mai? This is Dr. Eber writing this. She's asking a 16-year-old girl, are you going to Chiang Mai? And by the way, you might get kicked out of some videos. And there was follow-on correspondence about that. The young girl, the 16-year-old, started to feel a bit scared. She felt creeped out that a random 38-year-old from the internet she'd never met, never contacted, had contacted her and said, you coming to Chiang Mai. And there's a few other follow-ups where you're staying in Sarah. And this is normal chit-chat. Is this illegal? No. Is it creepy as fuck? Yes. Will it fly in my community that I've created, that I work hard every day to fucking build? No. It will never fly. And so I don't care if people say, you overreact. I would rather overreact to provide a safe community. I don't give a fuck what idiots say about me. I would rather overreact, get in a bit of shit or whatever, than have another... Uh, situation like we had last year with certain predators coming in. So I'd rather overact than underact and let in predators. Simple as that. So I don't give a fuck what people say. So who does the account belong to? It belongs to this guy here who says, put Drunod in prison now. Donate legal money for action. And he got $5,000 in 10, 10 hours. That's pretty good. So what has he done with the money? And he got more, apparently some people say he got over $10,000 US. He got a lot of money on PayPal. So if you go down here, um, If you go to you scroll down, it says donations can be made through PayPal. Some donors giving large amounts may prefer PayPal for technical reasons. Now, what he's done is he said that uh, there's no there's no money. He's, he hasn't got any money yet, and this has been this is June sixteenth. This has been like you know six weeks or whatever. It does. I get paid by PayPal fucking every hour of the motherfucking day into my Aussie account into PayPal and then transfer to my Aussie account and I can access it anywhere in the world. I can be in China. This is the same guy who says donate to my Patreon because I can't upload videos in China, which is a fucking lie. So he scammed his Patreon account users and he scammed these people. And I can say that because there's no evidence. There's no money trail. So right now, in my opinion, it's a motherfucking scam. But I don't care because all the haters, you all got ripped off. You all got ripped off. I'm not in prison. I'm not going to prison. You can't go to prison for calling someone a creepy motherfucker on Facebook who contacts 16-year-old girls randomly. Now, I talk to a lot of teenage girls and boys. They contact me every, every probably 10th the hang on. Literally, it's got to be, I get over a thousand direct questions every day. Some of them in my inbox and some of them on YouTube. Every day, at least a thousand a day. And a lot of them are teenagers. And I'm very careful who I engage with. But they're contacting me. And I'm always keep it professional. I never, ever go and contact underage people randomly. Because imagine if I did that. Again, so this is where the hypocrisy comes. This is where people like vegan gains really piss me off. Now, Richard says some good shit, but he doesn't back up people who are protecting women out there. Is vegan gains a misogynist? Does he have something against women? I don't know. But some of the shit he says about women, it... It's, I don't know, something I wouldn't say anyway. I've got more respect for women. That's just me. Maybe I'm making assumptions there. Anyway, so I was just disappointed that Vegan Gains would promote a prison fund. How many, how many times has Vegan Gains said, hey, donate to this animal sanctuary? Donate to super meat? No, no, he's saying donate to put Drew Rod in prison. Essentially is what he's done. 
disappointing, frustrating, yeah. Anyway, so am I going to go to fucking prison for writing something on Facebook? I never made a YouTube video calling someone a pedo. People said, doing right, you made a YouTube calling someone a pedophile. I never fucking did that, ever. I said it's creepy behavior. What I did do, and I apologize for, and what I deleted like an hour or two later, was I said on someone's Facebook page who was associated with this guy, I said, come to the park, let's talk it, and bring your pedo mate with you. And it was up for me an hour, and then maybe two people saw it. But what these people did is they screenshot that and made videos about it. So if they were scared about their reputation or whatever, they wouldn't have done all these videos about it, would they? They wouldn't. It was just a setup. They set me up, basically, so I overreacted and I did, and I apologise for that. But no one mentions that. No one mentions when Duran Wright apologise or whatever. Or Duran Wright is human, he makes mistakes. All I'm trying to do is to protect the community that I work every motherfucking day. It's my tribe, basically. This is the tribe, the Royal Tool 4 tribe. And I work more hard than anyone, tirelessly, doing that. No one else cares more than I do. So when someone comes in and wants to affect the tribe, then they're going to bait me pretty easily. Anyway, so am I going to go to prison? Let's have another example of people who did try and put us in prison last year. Uh, we've got Kayla Itzines and Toby, multi-millionaires. They live down the street from me in Adelaide. We have mutual friends. We know where each other live, you know, like all this stuff. Toby's a motherfucking loaded motherfucker. He's got a $500,000 Lamborghini. Lambo's expensive in Australia. Anyway, so Toby's got so much money, he parks where the fuck he wants to park. And whilst I like the car, parking in a handicap zone is a real shit cunt move. So Toby, he put us through Supreme Court, spent fucking a couple of hundred thousand dollars in Supreme Court to try and put us away. My videos are still up because what I said was my honest opinion. Anyway, so he parks his Lambo wherever he wants. And someone said, I said Toby's on steroids. I never said that. I said something like, Toby claims to be natural. Don't get me started. Because in my opinion... I don't see how someone could be 60 kilos and become a soldier. I mean, I'm open to it, but I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. Can I get sued for not believing something? I, got, I, I went to Supreme Court, but it got thrown out of court for various reasons. But that, look at Toby's face. <laughs> Let's have it. This is, this is the day. This, look at this day. I was sitting in Supreme Court. Toby was sitting over to my right shoulder. I turned around and sort of smiled and nodded. And if, if looks could kill someone a thousand times, it was Toby's eyes we're burning a fucking hole in the back of my skull with a shotgun. That's what it felt like. It, like, it felt like if Toby had a gun, he would have put a fucking thousand rounds through me. But seriously, the dude, he looks like a cold-blooded killer. But he's not. He's just a nice guy. Soldier. Um, a successful. Definitely, he knows the game. He's playing the game well. Playing the game well. But he parks his Lambo anywhere he wants. So basically, I was, the moral of the story is um, drug dealer. Oh, drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty amusing. Anyway, the moral story is, where the fuck did the money go that Dr. Evil raised? Where did it go? And where's it going to go? It's not going to go fucking anywhere but that motherfucker's pocket. He's got a, he's a, he's got a single mum in France with a, a daughter. Why doesn't he give the money to that? What the fuck are you doing going to Thailand, drinking beer in karaoke clubs when you've got a, a single mum raising your daughter in France who's battling it out? What are you doing, man, in karaoke clubs drinking beer, going living up in China? What are you doing? What did you, you do with all the money that all my haters gave you? I mean, I don't really give a fuck because I'm glad those motherfuckers got ripped off. It might teach me a lesson. But they hate me so much for being so honest, for defending the women out there. And same with the Kelly scene thing. I had so much hate from that. And same with Freely. But me, a lot of hate. A lot of girls were like, I hope you fucking rot in hell. I hope you get... Some girls even said, I hope you get raped in prison during order. You know what I mean? What the fuck goes through these kids' heads, man? Crazy shit. But I learned a lot from the Kayla situation. I, I honestly, if I ever see Kayla and Toby again, well, the wind. I would like to personally thank them for making me a better person. Because it was a stressful situation going to Supreme Court at the start. So like, what do I do? But it gave me so much motherfucking confidence to stand up and speak truth and not really give a fuck about the consequences. So again, I don't really give a fuck about the consequences. Do I make mistakes? Yes. Can I work myself better? Yes. I'm learning as I go. But bottom line, if you come into my community and you want to start shit, you're going to be dealing with me. This is how it is. Uh, I don't like violence. And again, this guy offered to, he said to a couple of the guys in Chiang Mai, I would smash Drew Nida. Drew Nida's a punce. So that's when I started getting more like, you know, you want to go, blah, blah, blah. And he's just going and fight and the boxing or whatever. And I realized what was going on. I'm just like, just fuck off. I'm busy. I'd rather give my time to people who really want it. But anyway, this is just a video explaining, highlighting six weeks later, there's no 
legal repercussions going on. I've been sued many time by people who are fucking loaded. David Wolf, multimillionaire, tried to take me to Supreme Court of San Diego. Nothing happened. Callum and Toby took me to Supreme Court. Nothing happened. Long story of that one. But my videos are still up and I didn't pay any money. So the truth's the truth and I'll fucking stand by that till I die. So where'd the money go? <laughs> That's the question. Is it appropriate? Here's a question for you. Is it appropriate for 38 year old guys to contact random girls, 16 year old girls over the internet? In my opinion, it's inappropriate. Maybe if it's, if it's like a, an eBay sale. Hey, I'm going to buy the fucking the such and such off you. Where is it? Have you put in the post yet? That's the only time it's appropriate in my opinion. If you're 38, you don't contact 16 year olds randomly on the internet, in my opinion. Anyway, let's, anyway, let's have a quick read of a father who wrote me. This is what the father wrote me. Someone just sent me to link to the post by such and such, the girl who I'm not going to reveal her information because she's underage, in mid-May where she said Isel had DM'd her asking if she's going to Chiang Mai. I had not heard the, this part of the story before. Isel has bombarded people with messages demanding others support him, which I thought was stupid, which he succeeded in whipping up support. But if he, a 38-year-old man, was texting a 16-year-old girl who he didn't know to ask if she was going to be in a city where he was going to be, I can think of no good reason for him to be contacting her. Very disturbing, weird, and out-of-bounds behavior. Now, this is a father of daughters. This guy has daughters, man. So he's speaking from personal experience and personal interest for safety. If some 38-year-old guy was messaging my 16-year-old daughter, I would take action to make sure that he never contacted her again, and I would too. Knowing this, I realize now why you would respond like a protective dad when you learn a guy arrives in Thailand from thousands of miles away and he's been trying to contact this child essentially in your care through private messages. When people come to my event, they're under my care technically, really. It's my responsibility. That's why when people don't have helmets or people take wisdom downhill, I'll fucking say something. Because if something happens, I don't want anything to happen, but it's on me as well. So that's why I'm protective, man. And when I'm trying to manage everything, I get a bit hot on the collar. That's just me, man. It's just me being Daddy Duranite. Um, while that doesn't establish he's a pedophile, I agree it doesn't, it definitely calls his character into question. That's all I was doing. Hope he was meeting, hope he was, was he hoping to meet with her? What 38-year-old makes dates with a 16-year-old online? Stinks. I think Isel has a big problem in his lawsuit if he ever gets anything going, which I doubt. No jury is going to think a 38-year-old guy contacting a 16-year-old girl is appropriate. I can't believe he's conned all these people into thinking he's a victim. I'm surprised more people don't know about that. It also suggests that he had some weird intent in coming to Chiang Mai. If he ever does file something, tell me and I'll send you the bizarre long rants he sent me with a bunch of not credible lame excuses. Juries don't like lame excuses. So you, the viewer, you're the jury. What would you do in my situation? Again, there's plenty of haters. Go, I don't know what the fuck you go and go to prison, whatever. Well, I, don't, I don't live for you guys. I live for the people who want to live this lifestyle. If you come in this community, if you try and break up my tribe, then you're going to deal with me. You always will. Take it or leave it.